And I now recognize the distinguished gentleman from California, Congressman Bill Bray. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm honored to uh, speak to the words of uh, my dear colleague from Arizona, and I appreciate that he uh, not only quoted Shakespeare, but uh, also uh, made a nautical reference to uh, uh, the facts of life when the tides change. And as a child of the ocean, I appreciate that, uh, uh, sir. But uh, let, me, let me just say, we've all got to understand how we got where we are today. Uh, the fact is, uh, in 06, uh, the American people were fed up with the Republicans spending too much. Not because we had raised taxes or cut ca taxes, but they were fed up with our spending habits. Four years later, the same voters threw out the Democrats, not because they hadn't raised taxes, but because they had, con they had expanded expenditures extraordinarily. And so I think if there's one indication that we ought to understand that when you navigate on the, the, the ocean, you learn knowing which way the waves are coming, which way the wind's coming, and you learn from your experience that there are some things that you don't want to fight. And one is the will of the American people. And as we look around uh, the world, everybody celebrates the, the Arab Spring, where the average person in Arab countries are standing up and saying, not just no, but hell no. We're going to stand up and say we had enough. Well, what's happening, it's happened in America, too. The fact is that the average citizens in America, just like around the world, now can communicate through the Internet. And no big government, big operation, big cartel can keep them from communicating. And so there is an energy let loose, not just in Arab countries, but here in the United States. It says, America, we've got to live within our budget. You're not going to tax us anymore. And, Madam Speaker... I think we've got to remember that the American people saw this coming. They saw, starting in 06, a spending spree that went off in, in, uh, in 08, I mean, and went off for two years of extraordinary spending. And actually, even before the new administration went in there, the American people saw that there was going to be spending done by Republicans or Democrats that were going to be used as an excuse to raise taxes. And that's why they said we're taxed enough already. So we need to get down to the fact that we're talking about where is the credibility of this government. It has to be reinstalled by the fact that we can be trusted with the budget. Not trusted with raising taxes, but trusted with spending control. That is going to be the real crisis. Um, notable uh, economist Art Laffer just said uh, recently, that he almost compares what's being proposed by some in Washington to somebody, a, a couple going out to Monaco and then to Italy and then to France and running up a big bill and then coming back to their boss and saying, oh, by the way, boss, we spent all this money. We need a pay raise. Or how about this? Why don't you split half of the uh, expense of my vacation with me? You pay half of it and I'll pay half of it. That kind of logic doesn't sell when you're facing uh, uh, with your, your employer. It darn well doesn't um, wash when you're facing off with your employer here in Washington, and that's the American taxpayer. And I think we need to recognize that. So in all fairness, there are things we can do, Madam Chairman, to stimulate the economy without borrowing money from China. We can bring back almost $2 trillion of American money to create American jobs here on American soil. Congress and the president just have to agree to do it. The money is out there. It's not being taxed. It's not coming back if we don't eliminate the 35% penalty for it coming back. And here's a place where we can invest in research and development like the president wants. Construction. We can go into manufacturing expansions. Things that the, the president and the Democrats in the past have take, borrowed money from China to create that kind of stimulus the economy. We can create a stimulus the economy, create jobs, and help to balance the budget. But first, we've got to understand that taxing people people to death is not the answer to prosperity. The answer for this family called the American nation is just like every other family, living within your means, understanding your limits, and spending within those limits, and not asking people to pay for your extravagance. And so, as we face a lot of challenges, I just got to say to everybody, as you could look at what's going on in California today, Madam Speaker, there is, a, there is a state that is controlled by the left, has driven business out of the state. The money now has run out. 
And not only did citizens lose jobs when those businesses left, but now because those jobs are not there to pay the taxes, the citizens of California who have depended and expected to have their health care paid by the state now are being told they have to expect less because there's no more money to pay for those social benefits that they were promised promised in such inappropriate ways. So as we destroy businesses, we destroy jobs, and even those who are on public assistance will be affected by the kind of destructive behavior. And the difference between raising a debt limit today and in the past and is that in the past, all you had to do was raise the debt limit to have groups like Moody be able to talk about um, addressing this issue. Fine, that's enough. Now, the people that are rating our our dollar is saying, you can't just raise the limit. You've got to show us that you are serious about controlling the spending. So now this Congress has to do something that no Congress has been forced to in the past. We have to address the issue of the debt limit, but address the issue of the debt at the same time. Now, I yield back to the gentleman from Arizona. And I thank the gentleman from California for his uh, wise and and, uh, well-placed words. 